Episcopal Church here in Ottawa, Tennessee. We are delighted you are here with us in person. We are delighted you are joining us on, um, on virtual worship. Whether it be in real time or later, we are glad you are with us and your prayers and your presence make a huge difference to us. If you have not already, please feel free to download from the website our full text bulletin at sfaec.org and in it you'll find all our hymns, all our scripture readings, as well as all our prayers. And we begin this morning with They Cast Their Nets in Galilee. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. There will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter, latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plumber, plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulder and the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for today is a portion of Psalm 27. We will say it together in unison. The Lord is my light in my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? One thing I have asked of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall keep me safe in his shelter, he shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling, and set me high upon a rock. Even now he lifts up my head above my enemies round about me. Therefore, I will offer in his dwelling an oblation, the sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not your face from me, nor turn away your servant in displeasure. You have been my helper. Cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. 
Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the house of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not, might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The word of the Lord. Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father, Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. When I consider great light, my first tendency is to romanticize the idea. My mind conjures up images of bright white clouds, sunshine, and any scene from the movie Lord of the Rings that involves the elves. But then I might go to a more practical image of a blindingly sunny day. Maybe you think of the blinding light that bounces off a field of snow. Consider what images the concept of great light stirs up for you. We are in the church season of Epiphany, and this is the season where we celebrate the light that Christ brought to the world. And while we consider this light a gift, we should also remember that light in its truest form is a disruptive force. You see, since the beginning of creation, light has been driving out darkness. And sometimes the light illumines the world with a soft glow, making things whole and beautiful. But sometimes the light disrupts the darkness and shows the world as it truly is. And our gospel text today tells us about Jesus proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. Jesus was bringing light. He was preaching that the kingdom was breaking into a world that is sometimes consumed by darkness. It's also interesting to note that Jesus' ministry really began with the arrest of his cousin, John the Baptist. And that arrest was a disruption that spurred Jesus into action and into his ministry in a land that was mostly Gentile, or the people who are not Jewish. 
So let's talk about the darkness for just a minute. Since the beginning of creation, light and dark have coexisted. In our various contexts, we might see the darkness as evil or as a separation from God or a separation from that kingdom that Jesus was preaching about. But whatever this deep darkness represents to you, you are probably aware that it exists in tension with great light. In Jesus' time, the Roman government would have been seen as a force of darkness in the world. The Herod who had John the Baptist arrested was the son of the King Herod who ordered the death of all male children under the age of two. And some argue that this specific Herod was nothing more than a puppet king for the Roman government. In the Old Testament account of the prophet Isaiah, the force of darkness was the Assyrian army that had invaded the Jewish lands of Zebulun and Naphtali. And any people that have lived under an occupying force experience such darkness. For the past almost year, coming up in February, we have witnessed the occupation of Ukraine by Russian forces, and we have watched these dark events unfold on our television screens as the Ukrainians deal with the real life consequences of such a militarized occupation. Like those mentioned in our scripture reading, we are not immune to encountering the deep darkness of life. Most of us in this room know the deep darkness that grief can bring. The grief of the loss of a loved one or the loss of a job, the grief of health issues that prevent you from living life to the fullest. And we are also aware of the collective darkness in the world, the darkness of poverty, disease, and of the neglecting to see Christ in each other. In our epistle reading today, we see a little bit of this darkness playing out in some church drama in Corinth. Now, we all know that there's never drama in church, um, but Paul wrote to this church to address a controversy of people saying, I was baptized by Apollos. I was baptized by Paul. And honestly, if you look at the reading, Paul gets a little snarky with these people, doesn't he? And says, I'm glad that I barely remember which of you I baptized because it's not important. The good news, though, of the kingdom of God is that darkness does not have the final word. In our reading today, Jesus approaches two sets of brothers and he asks them to follow him. Both sets of brothers do. And our lectionary text tells us or it doesn't tell us if Jesus knew these men beforehand. There are several things that I want to point out about this. One, the brothers were seemingly leaving their livelihood behind to follow Jesus. They left their father, and that would have been not normal because they would have been expected to take care of their father as he aged. And Jesus, like that light that we talked about before, is again acting as a disruptive force. Truly following Jesus and not the image of him that we create for ourselves has the potential to disrupt your life. It might mean that you have to leave your old way of being to live into something new. It might require us to make sacrifices that make us uncomfortable. It might require us to challenge systems that oppress people. 
And it does require us to repent of the ways that we have not honored Christ in each other. And finally, fish for people. Jesus tells these brothers who become his disciples to follow him and he will teach them to fish for people. And we often think about the practical aspect of this. And on one level, it's true that Jesus was asking them to leave their livelihood. But what we don't always consider is that he was also asking them to leave an oppressive system. Because a commentary that I read pointed out that the brothers were fishing for the emperor and they were likely taxed to the point of poverty. And so Jesus called them out of that to follow a different way. They had to leave something behind. So this morning, think about what you might need to leave behind as you follow Jesus. And what might this community need to leave behind as we follow Jesus? It might look like us doing things like continuing to open our church to the wider community. And again, I know I say it from the pulpit a lot, but one of the most important things I think this church does for our community is our SAC Pack program that meets every Wednesday night and now they are packing 77 sack packs. And if you don't know what that is, it's a bag of food for children um, that are food insecure at some of the local <laughs> elementary schools. And that's a bag of food that's um, meant to hold them over for the weekend when they're not getting food at school. So that's one of the ways that this church makes a very practical impact in this community is by providing food to our neighbors. So shine your light and disrupt the darkness. Please stand. Affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 11. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Formed by the word and promise of God, let us pray that the merciful glory of God manifest in all the earth may drive away all darkness and that God's providence lead all people from death into life, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
for the church of Christ, that knowing now only in part, it may wait in humility and joy to see your full light. Lord, in your mercy. For preachers, that they may speak clearly of your Christ, transfiguring the words of ancient prophets. Lord, in your mercy. For the sick, for the dying, and for all who have asked for our prayers, including those on our short-term list. Pat Allen, Bob Andrews, Clarissa Boyer, Michael Bradley, Asa Gannon, Nellie Groberg, Charles Hall, Robert Hawks, Ben Heap, Mary and George Hester, Stanley Horning, Darren Lee, Greg Love, The Love Family, Gladys Martin, Allison McCants, Christine Nichols, Nevia Roberts, Randy Rockholt, Nancy Rose, Dina Roth, Andrea Simulus, Jody Slowinski, Jerry Sniff, Mike Wilson, Lena Woodson, Ann, Ashley, Christine and family, JG, Lisa, and those impacted by recent storms. That you will cause light to shine out of their darkness. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations of the earth and for their leaders, that they may learn the ways of your peace. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who seek you not knowing your name, that they will find that your everlasting mercy has enlightened them and called them by name. Lord, in your mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Brian, our bishop, for St. Paul's of Kingsport in our diocese, and for St. Mary of Old Agency in our companion diocese of South Dakota, and for the Chattanooga Food Bank. Lord, in your mercy. For those celebrating birthdays this week, including Joe Greenwell, Dexter Canelo, for those celebrating anniversaries, including Ed and Becky McCoy, for those on our parish family prayer cycle, Veronica and Carl Slack, Joe and Sharon Slowinski, Kevin and Linda Sneary, Lord, in your mercy. For those who have died, including Bernice Love, and those whose lives were lost in recent storms, Lord, in your mercy. Before you, O God, are all our hopes and all our needs. You are our life and light, our mercy and hope and our ever-dawning day. Hear us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Beloved of our Lord Jesus Christ, the peace of God be always with you. Just a, a, a quick word so that everybody is comfortable. Um, we offer communion in several ways because we want all to feel free to come forward and receive. We have, um, Josh, our deacon, will be standing here with the mini chalices that have a wafer up top to pull back the foil and you may receive it and then turn it over and pull off the foil to get the thimble full of wine. We have gluten-free 
option, option if anybody needs a gluten-free wafer. And we also have regular wafers that you can receive from me, and I'll have an intention top cup that I can dip your wafer in one if you'd like to do it that way. Or, um, Shelly, are you? Yeah, Shelly will be our chalice bearer, and she'll have the common cup if you want to sip from the common cup. All those ways are perfectly valid ways to receive communion. We hope everyone will come forward. This is the Lord's table, and you all are welcome. And even if you don't want to receive communion, please come forward for a blessing so we can all be together in this space. Now, I invite you to turn back to Psalm 27 on this Sunday that we are focusing on light. And here again, the words of the, the psalmist. I shouldn't try to hold so many things in my hands at once. And you all are being very patient. Thank you. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who then shall I fear? All things come of you, O oh Lord. We continue on page 14. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, 
who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate of the Virgin Mary and to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with blessed Francis, blessed John, blessed Andrew, blessed Peter, and blessed James, we may enter the heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
post-communion prayer is found in the middle of page 18. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously adopted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sweetness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. Our, se our, our former senior warden, Dearest Bagley, is here to report from our vestry retreat. There was some communication this week out in the weekly announcements, but we wanted to reinforce that here on Sunday. Uh, in regards to our capital campaign, our three-year capital campaign, and I will say very successful capital campaign, officially ended on uh, December 31st, just a few weeks ago. Uh, there are still some outstanding pledges left unpaid. If you have an outstanding pledge unpaid and you're still intending to give your pledge, the money will go into our general building fund. So just want to make you aware of that. So we're, we're still taking your money. Uh, as far as a pledge update uh, for 2023, for calendar and fiscal 2023, uh, currently Rocky Hudson, our treasurer, is developing our budget for 2023. We are woefully behind on information due to the dearth of pledge cards and communication about giving. Uh, it's essential for planning the fiscal year to have complete information about our income, so we are asking that you please submit your pledge card. Uh, if you typically give your ple pledge directly to the treasurer uh, or without a pledge card, could you please make your intentions known to Rocky, to, uh, to our treasurer, Rocky Hudson. His email and phone number are in the weekly announcement you received this week, and he's also in the directory. Uh, all communication with the treasurer is, of course, confidential. Uh, can I just tell Rocky's quick little story, too? Okay, I think he'd be, he'd be okay with that. So uh, in, in the vestry retreat last week, as we were kind of contemplating the 2023 budget, which is going to be a challenge without this information, folks, uh, you know, it's kind of speaking of church drama that uh, uh, Josh mentioned. So Rocky said, you know, I was never a person in church for years and years who gave a pledge card. I just... I gave what I gave, and I didn't think anything it was anybody's business, so I didn't submit a pledge card. He goes, now that I'm on the other end of it being the treasurer, he goes, I'm flying blind. i got to know what we're working with. So uh, from firsthand right there, uh, if you'd please just make your intentions known to Rocky or a pledge card. It will really, really help us gather a budget and plan accordingly. Our church is, is, is debt-free as we love it, but we, we need to continue to be good stewards of the work that we do here, and that information is really critical. So thank you for your time. Any questions? All right. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dearest. You all may remember that Dearest headed up our capital campaign. He and our current senior warden, Dexter, continue to head up stewardship. So please keep in mind how important all the gifts you share with this church are to us. It's what keeps bringing us to this place, keeps the lights on and keeps our voices lifted in praise. So please, if you haven't had a chance, do let Rocky know. Uh, this is another full week at St. Francis. T tomorrow, we'll be at Creekside at 9.30 in the morning to share uh, Eucharist from here that we celebrated today with our friends in that retirement center. Tomorrow evening, yoga will meet on Tuesday all afternoon, we have music lessons going on at the parish hall. Wednesday, as Josh mentioned, at 515, we pack 77 sack packs. Any and all are welcome to help with that. And then after that, at 6 o'clock, we have a brief worship service. It's live on Facebook as well as in person in the parish hall. And at 615, we will continue our discussion of this gem of a book in the Bible, Ruth. 
We ask that you read uh, chapter 310 through the end of the book, and we will have a very lively conversation, I promise. And it's not too late to join us. We'd love to have you be part of it. Um, on Thursday, Tai Chi meets, and then this Saturday, we entrust our sister in Christ, Bernice Love, to God's eternal care. The family, the Love family, will be receiving from 10.30 to noon here, and then at noon we will have a service with full communion here in this space. Um, and all support, all, all your prayers are deeply appreciated by the Love family at this time. Um, and if you'd like to help with the reception, there's some people doing that, and if you're interested, let me know, and I'll be sure to share their names so you can let them know you can help with the reception. Looking ahead, um, it's a very busy time. Uh, two weeks from this, past, this weekend, we'll be at Diocesan Convention in Johnson City. That means all of your active clergy and three lay delegates and one alternate lay delegate will all up, be up in Johnson City. Never fear, we will be here on Sunday, February 5th. And then that Sunday afternoon, a very special event at 5 p.m., we will have Kondelmas, both a worship service and a concert by Harv uh, Wildman's uh, new group. It's an Anglican choir he has created, and our own Sarah Tullock is in that choir. We'd love to see all of you come back. Bring your neighbors. It's a great way for people to come. It will be a candlelight concert, so I think it will be a very special concert. Uh, Chuck will be on the carillon for us, and uh, we hope that you all will come and support this special offering and use this as a way of, as Josh invited us, bringing people to church. This is a good way for them to be introduced to our parish. Uh, and then the following Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday, and I do mean not only S-U-P-E-R, but S-O-U-P-E-R. And you may see that we're already collecting soup and things to go with soup in the Northex. Please bring your donations, and we will take all those donations down to the Samaritan Center to help restock their pantry. About this time is when all the Thanksgiving and Christmas donations are wearing thin, and this really helps them restock the food supplies they have to hand out to those who need such help. Now, I was not supposed to be here. My surgery was canceled because you may notice I'm having some problems with my asthma, and we're working on that, and we're rescheduling surgery. It will happen, but just not right now. But what will happen right now is a blessing, and I need the children's help. So all children, please come forward for the final blessing. Thank you. We need all the help we can get, Margo. Okay, hands up. You remember how to do this? Hand up. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ.